あれではこの劣勢を覆すことはできぬか Well, greetings everyone. This is BJ Black from No Export for You, and welcome to part 98 of my Let's Play of Ama Yui Castle Meister. Kalmeg here is first injured and second unhappy that he was unable to turn this around. So, it's over. So, surrender already. So it seems there's no choice for but for him to surrender now. And with this, the dragon tribes will be united under the lightning dragons once more. And his little dream of uniting the clans himself comes to an end here. <laughs> so she tells him to kill him. Specifically, calling her Shuketo's child, daughter. So, what's he saying? So, if she leaves him alive, his grudge will remain. After all, he's got a deep, well, a deep grudge from all this fighting and nonsense. So it's necessary on a battlefield to keep your emotions calmed down. Now you need to erase Kalmerg and manage the dragon tribes. So that's how Kalmeri plans for this to end. Yes. So she overcame the trials and she's abandoned her softness. So now she gets to learn what it is to cut down another. But no, she will choose differently. So she isn't going to kill Shu and Shu Kalmerg. Since we've lost her father, the dragon tribes have descended into this chaos. And she's holding him responsible. That means you kill the leader of the rebellion. Yeah, she says that by dying, he's kind of running away. So that's a shameful thing to be accusing of him, him of, to say that he is fleeing from the responsibility by doing this. Well, that's exactly it. Dying is not going to be an acceptable way of taking responsibility here. So, from this point on, we need to calm down this chaos that he started. And he too is going to help to the fullest of his abilities. So what? So 
結びつきが強い。So she wants to make it so that the dragon tribes are in an even better place in terms of getting along and being connected than when her father was in charge, even. So that is the dragon tribes that she is aiming to be a leader of. Stronger and kinder. And to that purpose, Kaomug's power is going to be necessary. In her place, when she was too weak to actually lead, he was strong enough to, well, attempt to lead the dragon tribes in a better direction. <laughs> so she wants him to lend his strength to this. <laughs> That doesn't sound like a happy laugh so much as a laugh of despair. So, having committed the sin of fighting against his own comrades, she's saying that she wants to unify, uh, include him in the unification of the dragons. And furthermore, use him to that purpose. Yes. Ha. So yes, that is how she is holding him, who lost this battle, responsible. So when that when that goal has been fulfilled, then she shall forgive him, and then he can live or die as he likes, and she won't stop him. So she's saying that she'll forgive him in the end. In spite of the violent conflict we just had? Well, she's certain that they're just a little bit different and working at cross purposes because of it. But since we've come to a conclusion of the battle, we're going to start over from the beginning. But supposing that he again becomes unfulfilled with it, if possible, she'd like him to live through it and in his own words and deeds convey it to her. Kind of like she has gone through her own words and deeds to convey this to him. So, will he do it? Well, yeah. She is the victor here. And the, the strong are right here, and that, amongst the dragon tribes, that is their pride. Just randomly throwing out pride again. I don't even know what their pride's supposed to mean at this point. So... She had an amazing ability in the end. She, who is Chiyokyoto's remaining seed, managed to grow this strongly.
So, Carl Meg, who wasn't able to see it in her before, and now considers himself a bit mature, immature at that time, and sees that he committed quite the sin in doing it. <laughs> So he pledges his life to her and until it runs out he swears to serve her and support the dragon tribes. <laughs> Finally, he is called her by name. That's what you're happy about? Okay, fine, whatever. So now the mist dragons that were under Kalmerg's control have ended their fight, and Katarito is the victor. So she, there's a celebrations and a coronation and stuff like that. And the whole Civil War thing is ended. Alright, she says sorry for making us wait. The coronation ceremony took a long time. Well, it was quite the, the uh, spectacle too. Certainly your ancestors and your father are proud of you. <laughs> well, she's happy Avaro says that. But this means we're parting ways with Katorito. And Fia's is lonely. Really? Why is that? Haha. <laughs> uh, well, because she's taking up the mantle of her father and she's going to be staying with the dragon tribes here, right? She didn't actually plan on leaving the castle, though. <laughs> really? Why is that? She's happy, but why? Is it really okay? So, what happens after she's left the dragon tribes? She has already entrusted that to another. Ah, to whom? Koa! Are we sure we can't kill him? I really don't like the guy. I think we could cut him open, show him all his internal organs as he's died. Hey, is there a way that we can keep this soul suffering for all eternity? That would be pretty cool. Ah, anyway, he's saying that Katorito is certainly putting him to work. But that too is a bit of a se good sentimental sense to her. Kalmerg. Is this really okay? Well, this is his first order from his new master, so he's certainly going to put his full power behind it. Okay, if you're okay with it, okay then. <laughs> the dragons certainly are a complicated group. They finally got their leader and they're just going to let her leave. Katarito, is this really okay? How many people, how many times do we need to ask that? Well, yes. After all, she hasn't paid back all that they've, all the help that they've given her in doing this. Mm, 
Oh, what a good girl. And of course, you're welcome. Let's travel together again. Glomp. <laughs> well, at least Fia isn't molesting little girls anymore. Okay, if that's what Katharita wants, Avaro isn't going to stop her either. So, let's go to the God's Haze together. But, is this not maybe a bad thing? The dragons are under the Fiusia faith, and that's... well, we're headed for their holy ground. Won't it become a problem? Katharito actually never learned anything about the God's Haze from her father, actually. And for that purpose, as the leader of the dragons, and falling under the Fiusia faith, she needs to go directly out there and verify things. And of course, she's going to have the god support the dragon tribes and raise their power as a show of respect. So that was quite an independent amount to the end of that. But anyway. Since we're getting along with Katarito and all of the dragons, Fia's happy. Well, if Katarito's intentions are clear then, everything's taken care of. So once we get through the Thunder the Thunderhead Sea, next up is the elf area. They live in a forested region. And as much as possible, we don't want to harm anybody that lives there. So while Avaro is thinking about that, Kalimerg has something to say. Katorito, Katorito, one thing she'd, he'd like to say. Okay, what is it? So at this point, Kalimerg is Katorito's vassal. Okay, yes, that's true. Therefore, as, as her vassal, he's thinking that he should give her some valuable information. Valuable info. Under certain current circumstances, it could be what we're asking, looking for. Don't tell me you know how it's something about the castle. Well, in a certain way it does concern the castle, but more directly, it is directly connected to Katorito. So connected to her? What is it? Well, the music's died, so obviously it's going to be pretty heavy. Kalmerik says in a stern voice, So, a certain human, a black-robed warlock by the name of Gaidal, is connected to her father's murder. Bam! Gaidal! Oh man. So if Avaro knows his name, they must have met already. As expected. Gaidal has come and met us. 
So a human warlock killed her father. Katharito is pretty shocked and doesn't reply very well. And Avaro is shocked as well. In terms of what someone who can actually form a reply at this point, surprisingly, it's Fia who is calmest. So, why did that person kill Katarito's father? And, why does Kalmeg know this? Well, Gaidal made an offer to Kalmerg, asked if he didn't want a stronger position. Basically, to take over the leadership of the dragons. Yes. And then Kalmeg went along with him. Well, Kalmerg didn't have any intention of trusting the guy, of course, but it did seem that it was in his intention to assist Kalmerg's rise to power. To that, to that end, he contributed a bunch of resources to his uh, to his accumulation of soldiery. So, behind Kalmerg's assaults was Gaidal Company. Hmm. Kalmerg's actual intention was to take some time and review the circumstances and when the time was right have a showdown with Shiu Ketor and winning there claim the seat he wanted. But Gaidal said that that method was tepid and there was a better selection of choices and with that he smiled and left apparently. After that, Shiu Ketel died. A guy that was not present at the scene, but it's almost certain that he was pulling the strings somehow. So this mysterious death Avaro had heard about it as a sudden loss of a leader. He had thought it was a disease or an accident, but turns out he was killed. So what was that human's purpose in raising his hand against her father? Kalmerg does not know. Although the two of them were cooperating, it was only in connection to the raising of troops. And at this time, he's unable to contact Gaidal at all. Probably the time when they parted ways was when Ga Kalmerg attempted to take the castle. 
So why would Guide all cut off communications at that point? Well, Gaidal was obsessed with the castle. One of the things he told them was that they shouldn't, the dragons should not lightly attempt to take it. So when they first assaulted the castle, you remember the clouds first defended the dragons, kept us from seeing them properly, and then they moved into the castle, obscuring our movements and letting us fight more easily. Now, somehow or other, Kalnerg thinks that Gaidal was able to manipulate the clouds into doing that. And that's when Kalnerg realized that his alliance with him was at an end. Now, how he was able to manipulate the clouds and why he decided to take the side of the castle is still a mystery. Hmm, so that means that Gaidal was supporting us. Interesting. Probably his purpose was since the dragons would have taken the castle and destroyed it, Gaidal wanted to prevent that. Going forward, Gaidal is probably going to try his hand at taking the castle again. After all, they are getting close to the god's haze already. So Katharito finally puts in some words together and asks, So that human was able to win against her father. Yeah. If her father was even stronger than Kalmerg here, that means Gaidal was seriously holding back when he fought us. And he never breathes a word of his interaction here, involvement here. So that's exactly true. Even though the, he was the chieftain of the dragons, Kalmerg somehow has enough power to even defeat him. His advice for Kautorito is that she must not fall into his traps and she must not trust him. Well, I guess he's properly on our side. And even though he only met Gaidal a few times, it seems he's got a this kind of impression of the man. So, that man is just a bundle of loss. He acts only for his interest only in his own advancement, and he's willing to take advantage of others and abandon them when he's done with them. Just in order to get to where he's trying to get. So, Katorito, you absolutely must not accept any offer he might make. Kalmerg wants her to 
give full weight to his advice here. So, being unable to stop him in regard to the Shiu Ketol incident, he considers himself partly responsible. But from the beginning, their connection with Gaidal has been severed. So, if you're thinking about taking revenge for your father, you need to be very careful. Alright, she understands and she will take care. So, Kautorito takes a bit deep breath. And it seems like the conversation about her father is over. So, changing the subject, Avaro's got a question himself. So, Kalmerg, what do you know about the castle? For example, would you know of any way that we can separate a goddess who has been sealed into it from the castle? Okay, he is sorry, but he is unable to be of any assistance here. Is that so? Well, don't get the wrong idea. Since Katorito likes us and everything, he certainly will not obstruct us in any way. But he simply holds no information, no knowledge that can help us. So, what does that mean? So, when Fuchsia, way back when, subjugated this land, there were many of these taboo weapons existing. Oh, this is the battle between the humans that wanted to resurrect the old gods and the followers of Fuchsia, right? Yes. So those humans captured gods and tried to convert the faith that made the gods into power by means of these weapons. So the castle was ultimately made by humans in the past. I guess we never fully got that told to us in our battle with Mikshuana. So that's exactly it. And seeing that as unforgivable, Fuchsia, the elves, we the dragons, and furthermore, the humans that were on our side destroyed all of them. So, the gods and spirits that were converted into taboo in this way there was no way to save them other than by destroying the weapons entirely. There was nothing remaining but to dispose of them. So, in other words, they knew of no other way to do it. So, this method of sealing gods actually 
was a bit of knowledge that the Fuchsia faction was not able to get its hands on. It makes sense that they wouldn't be able to reverse engineer it if they didn't even know how it was done in the first place. Ah, uh, Fia's face goes all pale and she looks down. Kalmerg is a leader of a portion of the dragon tribes, but he is not actually the confirmed leader of the entire dragon tribe network. And for that reason, if you had been able to talk to Shu Kettle while he was still alive, you probably would have been able to get more accurate, more detailed information out of him. Ah, so it's connected to that as well. Well, since Shio Keto was killed, and now Katorito is leading the Dragon Tribes, it's a bit of a problem. We quickly speculate that this may have been one of Gaidal's aims in killing Shio Keto. So, he's sorry for being able to give us not but this little information. Well, thanks anyway for what you did have. At the very least, we've learned one thing that we didn't know before. So we've confirmed that the castle was ultimately made by humans. Back in the... Back in that one conflict. They don't actually give it a name, do they? Uh, it might be the Fuchsia War, but don't hold me to that. Uh, furthermore, the language that's all over inside of the place was done by them. Yeah, count on Navarro to geek out on that. So if we can connect with those humans who made the castle and their history and knowledge, possibly we could save Fuchsia with save Fia with it. <laughs> uh, Fia, are you all right? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. She's fine. She's fine. She was totally spacing out. Yeah, after all, we knew about this. We knew it wouldn't be a simple problem to solve. And we knew that it might be a bad idea to go to the God's Haze. So, from this point onward, our objective and our actions haven't really changed. Uh, the deal is, she's a bit down about not getting information. She really hopes to be saved. Yeah. So, we're going to save you and go to the Holy Ground. Yeah, in fact, we're going to the Holy Ground in order to save her. And for that purpose as well, we need new information on this. Probably we can talk to the head priest of the Fuchsia faith and certain of his believers. So, getting our info from the elf will, elves will probably be the best course of action. Alright, let's go. Let's go and meet the elves then. And with this we pass through the Thunderhead Sea. Oh. I guess it's the end of this part then. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.